Coming up on Inside Look. The heat wave hitting our area this weekend has fire crews on high alert. There is no excuse for leaving a kid in a hot car in this weather. Extreme heat. Triple digits have already scorched California and we're only in May. So who's at risk when the temperatures rise? We've got information that could save your life. Welcome to Inside Look. I'm Brian May in the OES newsroom and we are talking heat, extreme heat. We have already been at or near triple digits all across the state of California. We talked to some emergency room experts at the UC Davis Medical Center. Here's Sean Boyd. Well, the CDC says extreme heat causes more deaths each year than hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, lightning and floods combined. That's why it's so important for you to know the signs of heat illness. The first stage is heat exhaustion. And the signs of those are feeling lightheaded, faint or dizzy, excessive sweating, cool, pale or clammy skin, feeling nauseous or even vomiting, a weak, rapid pulse and muscle cramps. And while heat exhaustion is dangerous, if not taken care of, it can become heat stroke. Dr. Ian Julie of UC Davis Medical Center has some good advice if you start to feel those symptoms or see them in others. The first thing to do is try to limit exposure. So if you can get out of the sun or indoor to an air conditioned facility, that would be best. If you can hydrate yourself with cool fluids, that would be very useful as well. And if you have access, try to cool the hands and cool other areas of high blood flow, like the neck or the armpits or the groin. Um, and if you start noticing that things are getting worse, especially with confusion or people who have other medical illnesses, that would be time to call for assistance. So the signs of the more dangerous heat stroke are a throbbing headache, a lack of sweat, body temperature above 103 degrees, red, hot and dry skin, nausea or vomiting, a rapid, strong pulse. You may even lose consciousness. Now, if you or someone around you is experiencing some or all of these symptoms, you should immediately call 911. Now, know this, it is a life threatening condition and can quickly become fatal. While waiting for help, be sure to take the person to a cool area, remove tight or heavy clothing, and sponge their body with cold compresses. Now keep in mind that certain people are more at risk to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Now these are adults over 65, young children and infants of course, people with existing medical conditions like heart disease, and people without access to air conditioning. Brian. All right, Sean, thank you very much. For many families, despite the high temperatures, the games must go on. Youth sports are very popular this time of year. And for most of the games and practices, there is no shade, no escape from the heat. Children sweat less than adults, meaning it's harder for them to cool off, easy for them to get dehydrated. Get in there. Chris Richardson has won a state championship as the head football coach at Folsom High School. He takes hydration for his players very serious. We're constantly monitoring that because we're out here in the, in the, you know, in the big time heat portion of the summer, right. and you know we work out in the middle of the day unless it's you know super high temperatures. Richardson says he preaches to his players: if you're thirsty, get water now. And he tells them: as soon as we're done with practice, start rehydrating immediately. The hydration for tomorrow, we just finished the practice session, starts now. Right. And it's not going to the extra mile and, and getting a big gulp of Pepsi. It's, right. you know, water and, and, you know, sport drinks to a point. You know, you don't want to over overuse sugars, right. but, you know, eating healthy, eating fruits, you know, and, and just being, don't you know, hitting in and out's not a good idea. <laughs> have, have a good, healthy meal at home and, and, and rehydrate for the next day. Well, one person who doesn't need me to tell him how hot it is, is our own Rob Mayberry. Rob joins us now and Rob, I can just look at you and tell how hot it is. That's right, Brian. It is hot out here. In fact, this asphalt on this trail is 144 degrees according to this thermometer. I'm not sure about you, but I was caught off guard this weekend with this hot temperatures. So I had a chance to go behind the scenes at the National Weather Service to get an inside look at a new tool they're using that might just help keep you from getting caught off guard. The heat is a big story this week in the desert. A mild spring is taking a scorching turn. Tonight we have first alert team. With temperatures reaching the century mark in many areas in California this week, officials are saying it's a wake-up call for what to expect this summer. 
So we're taking advantage of what's happening naturally to also remind them that summer is coming and with summer in California, we have some pretty extreme heat. And now with advances in technology and forecasting, the National Weather Service has developed a new online tool that makes beating the heat easier. It's called Heat Risk. It puts the heat into a climatological context. It kind of tells you if this is normal heat for this time of year, if it's something that might be more susceptible to pets and sensitive groups, um, or if this is going to be something that we need to kind of sound the alarm for, for everybody, that everyone needs to be changing their behavior. We talked with a scientist who developed this tool, and Michelle Mead gave us an inside look showing how all that complex weather data is simplified in just a few clicks. You can see here we have uh, the forecast out to seven days. So you could click through each seven day to see, or each day to see how the heat risk is going to be changing. Or you can zoom in to where you're interested in. We'll do downtown Sacramento. And the seven day forecast is gonna pop up and it shows you what heat potential is each day of the week on that one point location. They call this the experimental heat risk tool and are hoping people will begin to use it when planning their outdoor activities this summer. As long as folks know the steps they need to take now, when we do get into the heart of the heat season, when those temperatures can become you know, hazardous to everybody, they'll have the tools in their toolkit to make sure they're prepared and safe, and we won't have those health and human impacts that can happen from heat. Rob, how long has this been available to the public? It's available to the public right now, Brian. Uh, they actually have been working on this tool for about four years. They just launched it here in May, and they would like for the public to take advantage of this tool. That's from emergency managers, soccer coaches, parents, paramedics. So we'll make sure we post a link on our website so that everyone out there has access to it. Before we go, I want to remind you once again just how dangerous your car can be to both your children and your pets. On a 78 degree day, the temperature inside a parked car can soar to 120 degrees in just minutes. On a 90 degree day, your car can reach 160 degrees in less than 10 minutes. And despite the common belief, cracking the windows does nothing to slow the heating process or lower the temperature. A child's body overheats three to five times faster than an adult, and children have died from heat stroke in car temperatures as low as 60 degrees. Now to your pets. Remember, animals respond to heat different than people. Pets can sustain brain damage from heat stroke in just 15 minutes. Some signs of heat stroke in pets can include heavy panting, glazed eyes, rapid heartbeat, and difficulty breathing. And it's not just inside the car that can be dangerous to your pet. Asphalt can easily reach 135 degrees on summer days, hot enough to burn your pet after just one minute of contact. Always test the pavement with the back of your hand. If it's too hot for you to touch, it's too hot for Fido to walk on. Bottom line, just remember all summer long, heat can be very dangerous very quick. If you'd like to see more videos like this or anything that we've done by our team, go to oesnews.com. You can also like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Look. For all of us at Cal OES, I'm Brian May. Thanks for watching.